Hi, I'm Stu Baca, and I'm a Gen X grown-up, and I support Gen X grown-up on Patreon, and you should too at patreon.com slash Gen X grown-up. Gen X Grown Up is a YouTube channel website and audio podcast you're listening to right now. All made for and by people who love exploring media, games, tech, and toys of yesterday and today through the eyes of Gen Xers who refuse to grow up. Your dinner cannot just be french fries. Basically, life sucks as a grown up. Welcome back, Gen X Grown Up Podcast listeners, to this episode 41 of the Gen X Ooh, Grown Up Podcast. Yay, I'm John. Yay. Joining us, as always, is Mo. Hey, everybody. And George. Hey, how's it going, guys? Things are a little bit different for us yeah, sure. today. I'm, if, I'm looking at these two weird guys. I don't know who they are. <laughs> if this sounds a little different, we're actually all in the same room for the first time recording this yeah. podcast. We are uh, here in the Hilton Homewood Suites in Pensacola, Florida. They were kind enough to provide us with a lovely a meeting room to set up mm-hmm. our equipment. That's because we uh, kind of a big deal. We we're, are a, we're big a very deal. big deal. <laughs> our, our, they've got a logo on the sign outside. That's I mean, right. We're serious. <laughs> serious now. Uh, but yeah, they were kind enough to let us in here. We're here for Pensacon in Pensacola, Florida yeah. this yes. weekend. Exciting. And Woo-hoo. since we're all together, we're like, hey, let's not dial in and do this. Let's let's sit down in the same room. That's right. So I went out and purchased a crap ton of equipment for us. George and... went on a spending spree. <laughs> we'll talk about those know. gadgets a little bit later. Yeah, just, yeah, as long as his wife doesn't know about it yet, right? No. Yeah, she doesn't listen, so you're good. No, I'm fine. <laughs> <laughs> We got 30 days before the credit card statement comes in to return. <laughs> okay. So she'll be she'll have something else to be mad about before that right. shows up. Yeah, no yeah. problem. Exactly. <laughs> Just have to distract her. Before we get into the regular part of the show, what is my favorite part, as you all know, is the fourth listener email. I keep getting confused every time he says that. I'm sure he's going to say talking to Mo and I. I, I told you. It's my, okay, my third favorite part of the show. Okay. Fair <laughs> enough. <laughs> no, my listeners are my favorite part. You guys are, you're all right. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> Our fourth listener email is again from Chad. Now, that name might sound familiar, Mm -hmm. but I don't give a damn. Chad likes to write into us, and you know, if more of you fourth listeners wrote in, we'd oust Chad and he wouldn't get his mail read. No, you would, Chad. No. We still love you. We still love to have Chad Chad in there. So Chad wrote in, and the subject line of his message was just a couple of comments. Uh Uh-oh. That never ends well, does it? Well, not for us. Just a couple comments. I mean, you know, <laughs> other people. I like your comments. enthusiasm, but your work sucks. We, yeah. we, have, we have a few notes. <laughs> Chad says, I want you to know that I hate you guys. What? <laughs> See, wow. he told you. He That's told a you. tough way to start an email. Jeez. So I need to put the proper Chad inflection in this. Here we go. I want you to know that I hate you guys. Oh, no. Oh. As if Oof. listening to you guys for an hour every Thursday wasn't enough. First, you get me playing Wordscapes. Not my fault. <laughs> now you got me playing Slidey and Not Tiny Bubbles. Not my fault. That's all John. <laughs> all John. <laughs> also, I watched Perfect Bid last night. That's oh, George's oh, fault, yeah, George which was actually pretty cool. Oh, well, see? Positive. Yeah. John negative, George positive. Well, hold on. Yeah. You guys are such a time suck in my life. <laughs> <laughs> But that was one of my life goals, actually. To, to be, be a, a time, time suck. suck. <laughs> you know, if, if nothing else, we serve as a bad example. That's one step away from being a succubus, isn't it? <laughs> that's very different. Yeah, that's, that's very different. different. We'll talk different. off the air. We'll talk okay. about it. All right. Educate me. Yeah. So Chad says, just kidding. It's all good stuff, and you make that hour on Thursdays go by faster at my boring job. Thanks, Chad. See, that's my second goal in life, was to make somebody's life better at their boring job. There you well, go. Well, there you go. Right? My bucket list is almost I mean, complete. Time suck, you're not doing it boring for, life better. <laughs> you're not doing it for any of your employees, but... But nah. at least for this guy. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Just for Chad. <laughs> Well, Chad's better. Chad, we appreciate your writing in. We're happy that we're a bad influence and a time Absolutely. suck. Absolutely. Anyone else who is interested in having your email read on the show, just hit us up at podcast at genxgrownup.com, and we sure as heck will be reading it here. Yeah. But with that, I say it's time to get on with the show. Let's go. Let's do it. There's fun at every table with tricks by you know who. There's lots of tasty foods. The two of them might be there too. You can enjoy a magic feel. It's the magic feel. While Burger King makes So here at the top of the show, of course, we always like to talk about what new things we are watching or reading or listening to in the world of media. And uh, I think we're going to kick it off with something, Mo, you were looking forward to yeah, in our uh, last episode. I know why you're doing that. You don't want to go back through another one of those looking forward back things and have a bunch you of better stuff. better believe <laughs> it, man. I'm going to have every single one of those he's, things He's going to button up every single one. <laughs> yep. yep. It'd, be, it'd be just the George show. <laughs> 
<laughs> so what have you checked out that you were looking forward to? Well, I was looking at the uh, that movie that just came out, Alita Battle Angel. Mm-hmm. Oh, right. Yep. yep. You know, my daughter was definitely looking forward to it. She read the manga that came with it. Mm-hmm. Um, and so I was, and I thought seeing the previews, it looked like a pretty cool movie. And it was. Really? Yeah, okay. So it was good? I, I enjoyed it. Uh, okay. It was, they, the, the combat on it was actually, like, was interesting. Like, you know, I think we were getting kind of like battle combat fatigue with all the superhero movies and yeah, all that stuff. Yeah, a little yeah. bit. But this one, it was definitely much fresher. It was, it was more different. For the okay. trailers, it looked like it might be a little more like kung fu more yeah, creative was, was sort more, of. Yeah. Absolutely. Did yeah. it have no, like a Blade slugging. Runner feel to it at all? No, not no? really. Okay, good. Um, but it did. Because that's know, what I was worried about from looking at the previews. I was oh. worried they went the wrong direction with it. No, no. They, I think they did a pretty good job. I mean, what's the guy? A Waltz? Okay. Christoph Waltz. Christoph Waltz. Uh-huh. Yep. He was one of the guys which, you know, pretty much any movie he's been in these days has been good. Well, yeah. if the movie is bad, bad he's, good. he's good. Right, exactly. <laughs> yeah. And uh, except the only thing I probably didn't like about it was that they had to interspeak this like love story thing. Which, yeah. Well, you know. Yeah. And I was like, all right. You got to satisfy the girls. They want to see the love wow. story. Wow. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> ladies. All kinds of hate mail for us. What the hell, man? No, now we're going to get letters written to us. <laughs> I'm trying to encourage fourth listeners to write in. We're already at time sucks, so now we're misogynists. <laughs> Just work it right in. Just Damn. Cross, That's not on my bucket list. Cross the whole so you know. spectrum. That's not the third thing on That's your not list. My third no. thing on my bucket list. But uh, no, but it, it was a good movie. I definitely would recommend it. I think it, it was worth seeing for sure. Okay. You know, I have the AMC Movie Pass yes, thing, right. and so you know, I kind of wanted to see it. And now it's easy to see things that I'm on the bubble with because it's basically free now that I have to pay the monthly <laughs> right. fee. So I'll probably Actually, see more yeah, of those things. I'm sure that's what they want yeah, you I'm to think. Right? Yeah. on that AMC Pass because they do it individual only. And yeah. for me, if I want to include the family, that's like 80 bucks because I've got that's my right. wife, my that's kid, right. my mother. Yep. I'll tell you, I just bought the single and it's actually great because if I want to take my daughter or my wife or whatever, it's still awesome because then I go buy two tickets and it's 12 bucks. So How's it 12 bucks? Because you're only paying for the second if ticket. If you keep paying like for an evening show. So you end up with two people and it's half the price because yours is it's free. It's normally 12 bucks. It, feel, oh, okay. it feels great I got you. when you do it. Yes, only one of them is free, but I'm like, yeah, I'm not paying 30 bucks for a movie. I'm paying 10 right. bucks for a movie. It feels, yeah. yeah it, I'm doing it, it 20 seems times cheaper. though, but still. Yeah. I misunderstood. I thought you were saying you took your wife and dog. Oh, no, no. And it was 12 bucks. No, I'm no, like, no. Do you get a discount? It's if or. Okay. No, no, not with that one. I know some of the other plans like Regal, they have like second or third tickets are discounted, but not right. AMC. Which is, I think, so AMC, I think eventually will do it because, yeah. you know, somebody else is. Well, it depends on which one of them ends up winning that war, yeah, right? If yeah. AMC ends up falling behind, they'll have to do it. If they don't. Yeah, they can just, uh, Mars works, so we're not right. going to change it. Yeah. yeah, true, true, true. So that's what I've been watching. Um, how about you, John? What have you been up to these days? Uh, you know, well, appropriately enough, you know, we are recording our podcast. Uh, sure. And I love podcasting. I love documentaries. Yes, you do. So I found a podcasting documentary. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> This is a film that came out in 2016. It's called Earbuds, the podcasting documentary. So it's not like a dog catching a football. It's not Airbud. No, no, no. <laughs> Earbuds. Ear. Earbud. Earbud. You know, okay. we're in the same room. You can read my lips and you still think I said I still air. screwed it up, right? Earbuds. <laughs> yep. No, it's not. It, it took me a second. Dog it's the weird blood. look on your face. That's what it is. Yeah. That's always there. <laughs> it's a sta- that's the regular look. <laughs> that's his resting face. <laughs> resting weird face. <laughs> So wait, so so it's a documentary. Yes, so it's called Earbuds, the podcasting documentary. It was actually like funded by a really huge podcast called the Comedy Film Nerds. Okay, uh, they are huge. I've listened to them a few times. I don't, li- yeah. Not regularly, but I've definitely heard them. And they're an enormous, enormously popular and successful podcasting group. And so they were wanted to explore this whole podcasting phenomenon. And they went actually traveled around the world to different places. They went and met listeners who've been influential. Without getting too sappy, I'm like one of the favorite parts of my day is sitting around recording this podcast with you guys. We have a great time and we yeah, laugh yeah. and then editing it I smile and laugh again and then listening to it so it really it, it really kind of it lasts throughout my week a lot and so this is less about podcasting in terms of like what mic to buy what it's really more about the communities that get built oh, through okay. podcasting okay, okay, okay. Right. you know when the uh, the earthquake and tsunami hit in Japan yeah. mm-hmm. and the comedy film nerd had a couple of key listeners there they talked to all the time and so they're like worried about her oh, like wow. all the other listeners were talking to each other they went and met her for the first time they flew to Japan in this oh, documentary wow. and met her okay. anyway they explore more than just their show. It's the heart and soul of podcasting. It is, right. It's our fourth listeners. I said it's always my favorite part and for that's not true for them too. So this really explores how podcasting has grown as still kind of a niche thing but definitely blown up. We talked before about how um, Serial kind of came out like 2014 and just blew the doors out. Uh, But it's still kind of, you talk to somebody and you say, I do a podcast. like, what is that now exactly? Is that talking on the internet? (laughs) What is that? Is that that, that like radio? (laughs) 
<laughs> Radio on the interwebs. Yeah. <laughs> so, you know, so yeah, so it came out in 2016. So Earbuds, the podcasting documentary, I enjoyed it because it was about a, a hobby that I have that I enjoy yeah, yeah. doing, but also because it's not a, a techie nerd documentary. Sure. It's about, they follow the lives and they talk to several key podcasters. They uh, you see Joe Rogan, who's of course huge yeah, right yeah. now. Right. Uh, yeah. We see that they met the uh, Welcome to Night Vale guys. They oh, talk really? to him some. Oh, wow. okay. Yeah. So it gives you a chance to see some of these people and see how and why they do. There's, uh, I forget the guy's name, but there's one phenomenal podcast out for a while. Uh, the guy was an actor, became a podcaster, and he came out as openly gay on his show, and it empowered so many of his listeners who were gay, maybe closeted or having trouble. It right. also challenged some of his listeners who were like fundamentalist Christian who loved him, and, and now, like, they, have and like, now they have this cognitive <laughs> dissonance where they're like, well, you're awesome, but I'm not supposed to like that. And so it opened up all kinds of dialogues because of the very kind of one-on-one connection you have with listeners, because it's not like I'm addressing people at a podium and on a stadium. And one well, no, thing- you're in their ear, right? Nine times out of 10, the people are using their yeah. earbuds, which is the title of this yep. documentary. And, and the, the way I was going to kind of cap this, you really kind of led me right into it. Like we scripted it, but we didn't. <laughs> it, it, is somebody we in the documentary, anything, it, it really almost got a lump in my throat when they said, when someone puts those earbuds in their ear, it's a privilege that they allow us into their head like that. Oh, absolutely. And I, yeah. I, I, I feel I, that I, way. I appreciate everybody that loves yeah. I mean, I'm yeah. not about to cry about it like John is right now, but... No. Yeah, yeah, we don't okay. look at me. <laughs> we can actually see it now. I don't know. I, I'm, I'm feeling a little disturbed by this. I know. <laughs> I'm a little uncomfortable. <laughs> it's going to take a little bit of getting used Isn't to. Is nobody going to hug me? <laughs> No. Okay. <laughs> so, George, what have you been checking out in media? Well, you know, I have a fondness for zombies. Of yes. course. Yeah. Sure. It goes beyond fondness, but yes. yes. It's right. A little, <laughs> it's a little creepy. We'll talk about that after. Right, Borderline right. fetish? Fair enough. Sure. <laughs> um, and I also have a fondness for musical comedies, like things like Dr. Horrible, mm-hmm. stuff like that. Oh, yeah. yep. Imagine if you took Dr. Horrible and Shaun of the Dead and shoved them together, and then they formed an illegitimate bastard zombie child. I'm in. I mean, I, I will watch it for sure, <laughs> but I can see it going both directions. I can see it being awesome or being terrible. Well, this one went awesome. It's called okay. Anna and the Apocalypse. <laughs> you know, if you go both ways, and I might like it. Right. <laughs> Terribly <Wow>. awesome. <laughs> Terribly awesome. <laughs> Awesomely terrible. So this is a movie. It's out of England. They play the whole thing straight, but with some comedy in it, which is kind of a different take. It's a little bit like Shaun of the Dead. That's why I yeah. say it's Shaun of the Dead meets Dr. Horrible sing-along blog, because they take these people that are in high school, these kids, they throw them in this zombie apocalypse situation, of which course. Which happens. Yeah. yeah, it happens all the time, right? Yeah. When doesn't it happen? Yeah. I know, right? And of course, they're separate separated from their loved ones. They're trying to get back. They're at school. They're going back and forth in the small little burg town that they live in and everything. But out of nowhere, just a full musical number will break out all of a sudden. <laughs> and the music is zomb- really good. This, they, is it related to zombies? Like the songs? Uh, some of it is. And then some of it is relationship based type songs. I and, love with the zombie. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's a different movie. That's, oh, that's, war- different that's movie. Warm Bodies. Yeah, that's, that's Warm Bodies. bodies. <laughs> this, right? There's a couple other ones. I really enjoyed this movie. I found it out of nowhere, you know, out on the public domain that we always grab our movies from. That's, that's not what public domain that is. That is what public domain is. Okay. I Listen, from a legal you. standpoint and protect ourselves from future incrimination. <laughs> it is the official public- standpoint of Gen X Grown Up that public domain does not mean what George says it means. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think it got a lot of play in America. I I've never heard of it. Yeah, yeah, me neither. Do you know when it came out? Uh, I think 2017 or 18. Okay, so recent. Yeah. It's yeah, it's definitely a recent film. None of the people in it are people I recognize, although maybe in on the other side of the pond, people do recognize right. these actors. Right. Yeah, they'll probably but, Shakespearean or something. Yeah, no, but <laughs> really good film. I people die in the film that you don't expect to die, which is oh. always a bonus. I I like it when you can't. <laughs> I love. That. I like a zombie film when you can't peg who's going to survive to the end. That's a benefit of not having a big name stars because you know if you, if, if it's like nobody, 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 Sarah Michelle Geller, you're like, well, she's going to live. <laughs> right, exactly. Right? But if yeah. they're all like nobodies, you're like, fair game. Yep. <laughs> Anybody Except can go. for Scream. Remember Scream had Drew Barrymore in it. Yeah. She died in yeah. the opening That's true. scene. Yeah. Yeah. Which yeah. actually surprised the crap out of me. I thought, for, yep. you know. Right. They pulled a Hitchcock Psycho where you yeah. killed right. the leading lady in the exactly. first a third of the movie. Yeah. Yeah. But no, a solid film. It's definitely worth the hour and a half that you would invest in it. Oh, okay. And if you enjoy musicals and comedies, hey. especially with a little zombie flair <laughs> and in the apocalypse, I'm can't there, go man. wrong with that. It's, it's checking all the boxes. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> <I'm in. laughs> Eagle's automatic four-wheel drive gives me the confidence to take the family to the beach the hard way. Eagle even hauls my boat out of this. Now, I wouldn't try that in an ordinary compact. Eagle's four-wheel drive automatically directs power for the traction to get out where there's nothing but woods and occasionally another eagle. 
Drown and Paneled is a brand new comic book focused podcast from Gen X Grown Up. Hey, I'm George. And I'm Jason. Every Wednesday, we bring you news, reviews, interviews, insight, and commentary on the comic books we love. And we cover everything from the golden age to the modern age. If you're a comic book fan who enjoys going beyond the page to learn about the history and creators who bring the characters to life, we're for you. You can find Drawn and Paneled wherever you listen to podcasts or on our website at genxgrownup.com. Talk to you guys soon. We're going to move into tech toys, but I'd say I have something to talk about, but it's really boring. Okay. So <laughs> Wonderful. I'm Way gonna, to sell it, Mo. But I'm gonna, I can't so, wait for your part. So, no, so I want to talk about the stuff that George has. That's a lot more exciting, and I'm hoping that excitement will carry over to my boring one. So, George, why don't you lead us off <laughs> Oh, so on you're this? hoping to ride on the coattails of <laughs> am, George's excitement. I am totally trying to ride on the it's coattails. It's like the new TV show that just gets introduced right. in the fall sweeps, and it rides off a of Cheers <laughs> right. on Thursday exactly. night. And exactly. the following ride for Big Bang Theory is <laughs> Mo. <laughs> <laughs> that, that is What's it? there a TV show called Mo at one point? <laughs> Moesha. Moesha. Okay, fair That's enough. It's Mo's nickname. Yeah, right. Yeah, well, Close yeah, enough. That's my yeah. other nickname. So we but said yeah. we're all in the same place. We said George went on a shopping spree. I did. Yes. You bought some new toys. I bought a few. We're using them. Yes, we are. Let's talk about it. So these are the Samsung Q2U microphones. These things are unique in that they're cheap. They're oh. about 60 bucks. That's not which bad. Is, yeah, it's for a good quality microphone. Hopefully the quality is coming through in this podcast recording today. Yeah, so if the quality sucks, we can blame George. Right, exactly. For once, it's not John's fault. Yay! <laughs> <laughs> but they have an added benefit of having a dual output. They have an XLR output. They also have a micro USB output. Oh, nice. Which is handy. Both very outputs handy. can be used at the exact same time. So oh, you can so record. You can split it off and yep. record. When you, you told me about that, that was mixture. stupid. That was That's really cool. Yeah. 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 Now, there are other ones out there. There's an Ars Tecca model that does a similar thing that's about $5 more. But in looking at a lot of YouTube reviews, they actually preferred this microphone over that one. So I was like, okay, I'll go ahead and grab this one and I grabbed it I also grabbed the Gator Frameworks tabletop little tripod arm microphone stand kind of things yeah which are pretty cool too yeah and they've got good weighted bases on these they have the tripod one they have the weighted base I grabbed the weighted base now in one fairness sure. you complained they're too heavy because you had to uh, carry them to the hotel well, they have to, but, but anything <laughs> gonna, I mean anything that's going to have a base like that it's going to be if you're setting weighty. up a permanent space right. these are really good choices for that because you're not going to have to move them and these will even I tested it these at full extension will hold up a Yeti oh wow yeah because and yeah. that's the microphone and that in we fairness you were lugging three use. of them in the box and three mics and all that gear because you yeah. had to haul yeah. them around but I mean they, I, I had to set mine up you made us do our own work which it was so we got experience with mine. it I did Mo's for him <laughs> that's because he was late yeah, yeah. <laughs> I was not late you just look at your text so I was like I'm here and you didn't answer now one other nice little here. benefit to the microphones <laughs> they come with quite a bit of things they come with a little foam pop filter hat thing that goes on a microphone sometimes <laughs> whatever you call I don't hat. know what you call those yeah. and then they Windscreen. also came with yeah. both an XLR and a USB cable they came with their own little mini tripod and a little microphone holder that you clip the microphone into. Mm -hmm. The microphones have an on-off mute switch on the side, which is nice. And when the USB is powered, there's a little light on it to let you know that it's receiving a signal. That's, that's so much. I yeah, mean, that's... it's like just, I mean, those are simple things that make a big difference. And it's nice that it has And those. these are dynamic microphones versus the condenser mics like the Yetis are. So the nice thing for podcasters is all in one room, they're not quite as sensitive as a Yeti is. A Yeti, you know, if a cricket farts in a room six miles away, <laughs> that Yeti's yeah. going to pick yeah, it up. If you have it cranked up, it's going to know it. Yeah, right? Know it, yeah. But these, they don't pick that stuff up. You can type on your keyboard on the same desk that these are sitting on. It won't hear it at all. So I've been really happy for a podcaster. These are a solid microphone at a reasonable price. Yeah. Well, actually, I'll, I'll the setup. I mean, we're taking some pictures that we're all together, so I'll put them on the show Okay. Notes. And did, did you say, did you mention reasonable price, what that reasonable price was? $60. I it. 60 bucks. Yeah. That's not bad. I mean, that's because a Yeti, I feel like a third of the Yeti, like 180 or 199 Yeah, or 120 is, is that what they are now? Yeti. Okay. So it's half, yeah. so about half the Yeti. Yeah. I mean, you can catch the Yetis on sale, Black Friday this or but, Cyber but, Monday that. But, but the price really hasn't changed that much on the No, nah, it goes down to like 90 Yeah. Yeah, yeah, something on like sale. That. Yeah. yeah, but I these mean, are a solid device, I think. This is my first time using it, but I mean, it's it feels like a. I mean, it's not my first time using a microphone working in broadcasting, so right. it feels sturdy. It feels nice. Oh, yeah. yeah, it's a solid. metal. It's a metal frame, mm -hmm. right? It's yeah. not like all plasticky or yep. anything. Yeah, it's got a little heft to it. About. And even if, if they put a lump of lead in there, it still works for me. If it feels a little heavier, it right. feels a little more substantial. Yeah. If it is it heavy, then it's expensive. Yeah, then it's yeah. expensive. <laughs> and we we just paired ours here with a little Zoom H6, mm -hmm. which is nice. That kind of combines the mixing board element along with the record, yeah. you know, the 
local SD record. That's yeah, doing the job. You know, I mean, you sound, this, this is a great little mobile I setup like for a group of podcasters. Yeah. All right. Awesome, man. And we'll put links down in the show notes. Absolutely. All right, quick, Mo, before we lose momentum, okay, so, riding on the heels so, of George. Yeah, this, is a, this is an amazing thing I found. We're ready. <laughs> it's a USB hub. <laughs> All right. Thanks, everyone. <laughs> well. <laughs> and that's our so, show. Yeah. So, so I've not well, heard. So what do these do? I've never heard of these. Yeah, is this yeah, new it's, tech? It's, it's, it's a new tech that you can plug a single <laughs> USB and you get like. So this is 11 hub. So 11 split out. Now, here's the thing I like about it, though, is that it actually has each individual USB has a power button. So you, you can know plug, that's been around. Oh, since I know. But I just discovered okay. it. <laughs> It's, it's new to Mo. It's, no, it's new, new to, to me. Mo. It's new to me. Because I bought this not even realizing that it had like those power switches, mm-hmm. which when I had that set up at home, you know, especially when we're doing like podcasting, I have a headset that plugs in and, you know, I have a micro, my Yeti plugs in and I'm able to just like turn them on. Right. You know? and without it, unplugging without and unplugging replugging. and replugging things right. in and all that kind in of stuff. In fairness, keep in mind, we have, uh, you know, we have listeners and patrons like Slow Mo, who we talked about last time, who he's not big, huge technical Fair kind enough. of guy. Good, right. yeah, and good so point. he may not know that with these amazing hubs have been around. You know, he might just have this little three three port hub. I, now I am impressed that it's eleven ports. Yes, and actually that did nice. jump out at me. Yeah, yeah it's yeah. eleven ports, and four of the ports are actually always on, so you can plug your phone in. So even if you turn off your computer, it'll still charge. Oh, so oh. it's got its own external power. Yes. Oh, yeah. Now wait a minute. All right. See, this is getting sexier the more you talk. <laughs> <laughs> so because it's powered, some of them are always available for charging, right. even if your computer is off. Right, and it's the well, that's pretty it's sweet. Two point four charge, the fast charge as well. See, and they have like, and actually they, each one has a little LED light, so you know if it's on or off. I mean, it's it's just a nice little I think you sold yourself short, Mo. Thing. Eh, the microphones it's, are pretty exciting. This but, is all right. right. I mean, there are no new microphone rigs. No, no, they're not. <laughs> <laughs> well, what is? Really, what well, is? what is? That's yes, true. But I said it's a cool, it's definitely, it's called uh, Appenage was the name of the company I got it from. Okay, and that's I'll a put, new I'll, name. I haven't heard of that I'll one I'll put before. them out. It, Amazon found it. You know. Right. So you had it for a little while, they're sturdy, it keeps working. Oh, I, I've been using it out for a few weeks. I okay. might it's switch mine solid. out then because I've got like two six port powered mm-hmm. USB hubs and they are a little cumbersome because they're slightly Sliding all around when they're connected, unless or you're you gonna... pull it, you pull the whole thing. Yeah, <laughs> it might be nice to have a, a larger USB setup. And even has like things that. that you could mount it if you wanted to, so you could actually mount it to something. You see, there we've come around. Is the connectivity to the device that you're going to connect it to? Is it standard USB A or is it the USB Cs that a lot of them are? Uh, now? It's just standard USB. Okay, because like some of the laptops now, they don't even have a USB A. Yeah, it's kind of a pain. <laughs> in a the USB C would be uh, an awesome. amazing uh, extra for thing. For Which I'm, right. I'll, I'll look. I mean, if they happen to have a model that has that I'll put that notes yeah we talked well. several shows ago about the frustration with USB-C mm-hmm. that, like, oh. so few things are coming around to using it and when but they it's do awesome, though. yeah it's, it's amazing when you device, have it yeah. yeah I mean you could power you could recharge your laptop off USB-C which is pretty amazing right yeah <laughs> and data d- display everything together so, okay so there you go so hey mine's more exciting than I thought then <laughs> well done John keep up the momentum man let's go I don't know how I can follow a USB hub I'm gonna you try can't. you can't <laughs> it's over just give it up for probably the last 20 years or so I have always had some kind of a cool, different, weird front door lock on my door. Oh, God, yes, he has. Yes. I, oh, I remember Lord. you said the button one. Yeah, so, so I used to have, initially I had one that was remote control. Mm-hmm. That was the first one I ever right. had at my old house when I lived in Tallahassee, yeah, right? That old and so on your on your key fob, you can you walk up and hit the button and it go yeah. unlock for you. But you had to either hit the button or you had to turn the, you have a key right. to do it. Uh, and then shortly after that, I uh, when I moved to Jacksonville, I bought a new one for my new house. And this one has, it was like a, well, like colored, a, a right? pin based. Yeah. You mm-hmm. punched in the number and then you had right. to manually turn the thing. Uh, well, that started getting unreliable. You'd punch the number and it like you'd recognize the number, but it'd go and like it wouldn't actually unlock. It wouldn't you know you job. can replace batteries in those, right? Didn't fix it. Didn't fix it. Didn't fix it. <laughs> <laughs> or even if it would have fixed it, I was much happier going to look for something cooler. That's right. true. It's so, good excuse as any, right? New gadget. That's right. Oh, a scratch on my phone, new phone. Right. Yeah, right. <laughs> it's Wednesday, so, new phone. So I went looking around for, like, it's like when you buy a new TV. I don't get the same size. I'm going to get a bigger size. Well, I had to get a new door lock that was tech and I don't want the same one. I want to get new tech. Yeah. Uh, so I looked around. I ended up finding and buying uh, this front door lock from a company called Lockley. Okay. Lockley. Oh, it's recently renamed. They used to be called Pin Genie for a while. Yeah, I thought yeah, you were yeah, going to say they were related, related to Rockwell or something. No, no. Like, no. This Lockley door lock is pretty damn amazing. Really? It's like the Nest thermostat for your door lock. Oh, okay. The number one cool badass thing about it is it has fingerprint recognition. Mm. Oh, yeah. Okay. So when I was over at your house, this is that. This is the oh, new door okay. lock. That's why you couldn't get in. Yep. Sorry. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, nope, he's on the U.S. federal watch list. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> so when I walk up to my house now, I don't need a key fob. I don't need to get my phone out. I don't need like a, a key. I just touch my finger to the thing and it goes, 
it opens like your phone unlocks. Oh, okay. Which makes, yeah, that makes yeah, sense. It's really, really cool. On top of that, one of the problems with, you can open it with a pin if you want, but if you think about it, there's a security issue with pins with somebody's like looking at you or through binoculars or observing. They would see what buttons you're pushing. So if right. you're also, code, also certain buttons will wear. Yes, yeah, so if you go sure one, two, three, using, four, yeah. right, you have that problem. Instead, it has a touch capacitive screen. And when you touch it, it lights up and there's four buttons and each button has three numbers in it. And so when you type in oh. your code, people don't know which of those numbers you were trying to push. So one button might have one, seven, and zero on it. And so when I push it, it, circle, you're pressing a number it inside them. the circle? Ah. Yep. Oh. So every time you turn it on and you type the code, it's a different pattern, but no one can tell what numbers you were typing, even if they're looking right over your shoulder. Really secure, really neat. Plus, George, you visited and I was mm -hmm. able to do this. You can give a guest a pass. So I go, hey, George, put your fingerprint on there. Got you. And on my phone, I can set an expiration date and say, you can do this until Monday and then you your fingerprint doesn't work anymore. Right. Or you can give someone a, someone could visit your house. You have an Airbnb. Right. And they sync up your, their phone with it and knows the ID. And then through the internet, you can say, oh, I see that you you just You're currently there. logged in. I'm going to give you permission. You can either give them a code or you can just unlock it on the fly. And when they leave, it relocks and it doesn't. Uh, That's pretty cool. So it has a key in it too, right? It right. has a real physical genuine key as well. The, does it have one of those keys that you could actually bump key it to match your current locks or is it its own independent? No, no. It's its own independent okay. standard key. Yeah, you can't match it up. Now, maybe maybe a locksmith could, but not built yeah, into that's that. Not, yeah. Right. That's not that important. So I, I, <laughs> I, I love home tech gadgets. Apparently, I haven't done this yet, but you can sync it up with, uh, with Alexa or Google Home if you want. Oh, okay, now that's a little creepy. So because how many times does Alexa, Alexa... unlock the door! No, I'm just like, <laughs> how many times does Alexa just out of nowhere start talking to you? Well, just think right now how many people listening to this... Because, I said, Alexa, Alexa. because I said Alexa, they're like, shut up, Alexa! Because they just started talking. <laughs> Alexa, 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 <laughs> Alexa! Alexa, send Gen X Now you're just money. trolling our listeners. Yep. <laughs> I hope you so, have your okay, earbuds. So here's the big question. How much it costs? Okay, on the next topic. <laughs> <laughs> It was kind of dumb. It was kind of dumb? It's kind of dumb. 250 bucks. Woo! For yeah, a door you lock. know what? That's not bad for a door lock, though. For I mean, you talk about just a standard bolt and key door lock. Those things are 60, 70 bucks sometimes for, well, for a good for one. For a good one. For a good yeah, one. Yeah, I guess so. You're so right. So you're talking about all the technology that's built into this with the Bluetooth connectivity and the phone apps and the allowing people to come and go at certain times and stuff. Yeah. I would pay 250 Like, I thought you were going to say like 750 and then I would have been like, yeah, yeah. that's stupid. Okay. But 250 doesn't feel unreasonable to me for that device. It was worth it to me. Uh, and frankly, I. I, okay. I got it from Amazon and I always consider Amazon a try before you buy. Sure, right. Because I can play with it, mess with a little bit, and go, meh, and put it in the box, and Amazon's mm -hmm. going to take it back. Right. I say I'm going to do that way more often than I ever do it. Yeah. <laughs> but, I mean, I, I'm genuinely happy with it. The only caveat I would say if you're going to try it is got to have a little bit of uh, skill in installing it. Uh, okay. It, it's because it's a motorized lock. I mean, if there's any kind of drag or whatever, of course, the motor's going to give up, and it's going to beep and say right, it's not working. It's got to line up perfectly. I struggled with that some, but I think I got it working pretty well now, okay. and I'm really happy with it. Awesome. Okay. So, nice. Exciting. What? Want a good deal? Deal? Fly Continental's Chicken Feed Fair. Chicken Feed? Yeah, Continental has this special fair. You can save up to 50% if you buy in advance. Sounds interesting. And you can save up to 20% even if you don't. Greetings, fourth listener. My name is Ferg, and I, too, am a grown-up Gen Xer. And I have a podcast of my own called the Atari 2600 Game by Game Podcast, which, of course, is a deep dive into arc welding. No, actually, it's not. Every fortnight or thereabouts, I focus on one game for the Atari 2600 and give you all the details about it that I can in a fun and informative manner. I also take submissions from listeners who talk about their experiences with the game for a well-rounded show. This is not a review show. It's more of an overview. So if you're looking for hard-hitting, expletive-spewing critiques, you'll have to look elsewhere. This is one of the few systems that has had games released for it at a steady clip from the late 70s to the present day. So the podcast is guaranteed to never, ever end. Please check out 2600 Game by Game Podcast.blogspot.com for all you need to get started listening, and I thank you for doing that. Have you played Atari today? Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages, it's time for the Gen X Grown Up Game Segment. Welcome Fuck you, to shut the up. Wrangling nope, Brothers nope, nope, nope. Barman Bailey shut, Game Segment. No, shut up, shut up, shut up. Shut up. And clowns. <laughs> All right, so I want to bring up something that you guys have, I think you both have either already finished it or are close to finishing it. Yeah, Life close. is Strange 2. Finished yes. it. Well, finished, it. finished what we have so far of it. Yes. Second, yeah, episode. second episode. I'm close. I'm pretty darn close. So. You're pretty close? All right, so I've been metering out my play. I'm playing it for no more than 25 minutes at a time. <laughs> and when <laughs> I get to 25 minutes, point. <laughs> get to that little, you know, the little pencil comes up yeah. and writes and mm -hmm. everything. I got to say, I'm really enjoying episode number two a lot more than I thought I would. Because episode number one, like, it was exciting at the beginning, but then it kind of dragged a little bit till the very end 
end of right. it. This one seems to be, there's more cinematics I've noticed in this. There's a lot less choices to make mm-hmm. than on what I remember from the first Life is Strange. I don't know if that's because in this game, you're not controlling the person with the powers. Yeah. Right. And I think Which is kind of odd. It's a yeah, little it's different, different, right? Odd. Because in the first game, you had that well, power you, under your I mean, control. But you kind of are, right? Because you get to tell him, like, use the power, don't you? You know, it's some a cases. A little bit. Some yeah. cases, but some cases. you have less to do. So yeah. it's a little bit more story watching than it is story manipulating. I agree. Like the first yeah, game. I can see that. I did notice that Square Enix right now, I don't know if it'll continue on for very long, but they're doing a sale right now on all their titles. And Life is Strange 2 is one of those things ah. on sale. Yeah, so yeah, now's a good time to buy. Yeah. So yeah. if you've been listening to us rave about Life is Strange in general and haven't picked it up, I mean, it's, I mean, even if you don't think you're going to play it right now, get it in a sale. It's if you enjoy games at all. Yeah. And yeah. just a brief summary of the game. So for those of those who might not have mm-hmm. heard us talk about it a little bit, <laughs> it's two brothers. Haven't they get into a situation all. where their father is killed along with a police officer in a really weird circumstance. Yeah, they end up having to go on the run mm-hmm. because they're wanted by the police. It's an older brother who's like senior in high school age, it appears, and then a younger brother who looks like middle school, elementary school, that kind of a like thing. Like 10 or 11, something yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. there. Um, and then they're on the run, living on their own. The point that I'm at in episode number two, they've been living with their maternal grandparents, grandparents right. for yep. a little while. They've been estranged from them. And yeah, stuff, yeah, they've been estranged because the mother left so, uh, something abruptly, went down. Something happened. and yeah, you don't know why happened. yet. Yeah. You know, And there's like a closed off room that you're not allowed in and stuff. So I'm at the point where the kid is trying to force his way into that room. Okay. okay. Yeah. So a good observation is that if you listen to this game segment and just go, you know, oh, another video game. I don't play video games. It's not. This is kind of a video no. game for a not a video game person. Absolutely. Oh, yeah, for sure. This is a for playable sure. novel. Well, I've said it before ways. when we talked about the original Life is Strange and other things. This is the video game that I always wanted when I was a kid. Mm-hmm. This is the choose your own adventure. It is. Controlling a yep. TV show. Because I was, I was one of those kids who would sit in front of the TV for hours on end. And now this is a way that you can direct I can't relate. that TV. Yeah, no. I, I have no <laughs> idea what you're talking about. So here's a question. I have. So, so John, I know your daughter was huge into the game. Sure. The first yep. one. She liked the She has a Life one? is Strange tattoo. Yeah, she actually got a tattoo. Right. Does she like the second one? Absolutely. Oh, she's, she's yes. totally into this one too? Oh, okay. yeah. Yeah, we sit and so you get to those decision points yeah. where the screen splits. You're going to pick one way or the other. Right. We will have debates for like 10, 15 minutes about, <laughs> let's do this. <laughs> and like, I'm going to do this. Don't you do that, you know? Well, but that's the right thing to do. But you can't do that. And we'll, right. Oh, yeah. She's definitely heavily okay, invested. Cool. Yeah. Yes, I think I don't think they've lost any quality or anything between this one and mm-hmm. the first one. No. I mean, the quality seems right on point. I like that split screen decision making. Oh, it gives God. a little bit more impact mm-hmm. to yeah. it. Well, now you know this is a heavy duty decision. Yeah, right? yeah. exactly. Yeah, it's not, it's not, you know, is it green beans or corn? This right. is a huge, you know, And huge have decision. you noticed, too, that when you make some of those decisions, the little wolves in the bottom corner, sometimes it's the big wolf that highlights, and sometimes it's the baby wolf that highlights after you make a decision. Ah. No, I didn't notice that. I no, wonder if that. it's not like you made a decision that makes the little one happy or the big mm, one the happy. The little running wolves, you mean? Like, yeah, yeah, the brothers. Yeah. Little icons yeah. in the corner, yeah. Yeah. Interesting. Anyway, okay. but it's a good game. When's the next uh, episode coming out? Uh, Next episode, I, I don't know, 17 years. Yeah, way, <laughs> way too long. Well, the first one was, what, was like nine weeks apart or yeah. something? Yeah, it's been a while. Yeah. 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 So, John, what are you playing? Uh, I also have something. You know, Mo had something he was had looked forward to at the last show. Yeah. I have something I was looking forward to the last show that I followed I up gonna on. I am going to be so screwed You're going to have year. so yeah, many looking are. forward to's. <laughs> And this, remember, this was a game that I was looking forward to for like five years. Me too. Oh, oh that I was right one. there with you, yeah. brother. Crackdown like, 3. Holy cow. Right. Several cool things about this before we talk about the game is that it, you can't get it on Steam. This is a Microsoft exclusive. Yeah. So it's on oh. Xbox One or Microsoft Store. Okay, well, I hate that right now. Well, I, I, I'm not a fan of that. The good news is it'll probably come out on Steam later. The same thing was okay. true of Quantum Break. Yes. That so was a Microsoft oh, is Quantum exclusive. Break on Steam now? Yeah, it is yeah. on oh, Steam now. Oh, I want that one. Okay. Yeah, so you can, you can get it on Steam probably later, but right now it's an exclusive. But when on the Microsoft Store playing through Xbox Live on your Windows 10 PC, it's cross-play with someone on Xbox One. You can both play together. Right. Okay. So that's, that's pretty nice. cool. I haven't yeah. done it yet, but no, you can. Uh, so let's talk about the game, Crack Bat Down uh-huh. 3. So looking forward to it for yeah. so many years. Right. Such potential to let me down. Yeah. Kind of like the Incredibles 2. Right. Right. <laughs> you waited so long for and it. You're like, oh, is it going to be it, good? It didn't deliver on a lot of the promises they made during yeah. all the delays and stuff. Okay. But I am really enjoying it. I oh, too. okay. All those things they were delivering for me were value add. It's like, oh, it's going to be Crackdown. Plus, you can do this. Oh, it's going to be Crackdown. And you can destroy buildings. Yeah. Oh, it's gonna, but but it's 
still like Crackdown. Paramount. Yeah. They went back to the roots of the first Crackdown. It doesn't follow up on Crackdown to the kind of the, Thank the, God. the things that broke. No game gives me the sense of really having verticality and having the power and really growing your character very viscerally. Yeah. I mean, yeah, you can, oh, I got a new ability. But when you get a new ability, it your guy gets, gets bigger yeah, and gets buffer and oh, meaner looking. Sure. He, he gradually does that and you can all it's of a sudden. It's represented graphically. In it the, is. Yeah, your character actually gets bigger. Like gets That's kind of like different. the old Deus Ex used to do a that. Little bit, a little bit. Yeah. Little bit. Yeah. yeah. And like rocks that used to not be able to pick up. Now you can pick up boulders and cars and, you know, nice. big chunks of building. You can pick up a car before. Now you can pick up you a car. You feel so such so. force and power. And plus the exploration, it's such a vertical game yeah. because you you can leap so high. Oh, And okay. there are buildings that are 80 Sky stories Spaces, high yeah. and you can climb them and get to the top and there's one of those little blinking orbs on Which top you that you've got to get. I don't care if you're in the most time critical part of the game and you're on your way from here to there. If I see one of those, I'm making a detour. Yeah. I'm going to get it. So let me tell you the one thing I, I've been playing it too. Yeah. Um, and the thing I think they added, which wasn't correct now, which I really like, is Terry Crews. Oh, yeah. Oh, Terry Crews is Terry Crews. Acting in it? Yeah, he, he, you could play him. Yeah. He's a character. Oh, nice. Yeah. But he's also like the head of these this super group. cops. Right. Okay. And, he's, and he's always talking to you uh, and you hear his voice. There are these uh, propaganda towers yeah. where there's this bad person talking <laughs> and you go to the top and override it. And it's right. a big hologram of Terry Crews shouting his propaganda. Yeah. He's like, yeah, get it, get it. You know, yeah. <laughs> he's being typical Terry Crews and he's great in it. Yeah. And I also like the fact that they got the original voice that did like the the commentary yes, kind of over yeah, the, from the first crackdowns. I mean, he sounds almost like a radio announcer, but he's like, he's like, yeah, kill him, kill them all. Skills for kills, <laughs> agents. Skills for, for kills. kills. <laughs> Watch them burn. Yeah, this is, this the, is bottom, great. the bottom line for Crackdown 3 is it is fun. Yes. It's the fun that I wanted that I had in the first Crackdown. They approved on all the things in Crackdown that I wanted to see that they it's didn't do in Crackdown smooth, 2. It's a lot smoother. It's a lot. The it, graphics it, it, are better. It doesn't look as polished as a current new game that comes out today, but yeah. I think a lot of that's because it was based. Partially, they're kind of matching the art style of the first one, and partially, it's been in development for so long. A lot sure. of those assets were already there, but it's kind of a cross between like a Borderlands cell shaded thing. Oh, okay. And like a photorealistic universe kind of thing, like a blending of the two. Yeah. Huh. It okay. definitely reminds me of Borderlands a lot. It's fun. It's gorgeous. I've had it running. I alt tab, do work, do things I need to do. Right. And then when I have a moment, I alt tab and play it some more, you know, <laughs> and run around. It's been tons of fun. And it, this is the first game in a long time that I was looking forward to so much that didn't let me down. Yeah. Well, that's good. Plus, it has a co op ability that I haven't even touched yet. There's touch a whole yet. half of it I haven't And then touched. there's also a multiplayer, which I played with that a little bit to try it out because I'm not really a big you know massive multiplayer person yeah. but this one was actually it was kind of fun because like one that's where you get the dynamics of blowing up buildings and all that kind of stuff it's right. in that world it's not in the single player not in single player and then the uh, but thing is that all the tactics and stuff you use in the regular game work there so it's not like you're trying to figure out like how to shoot you know it, it just all works and so it was actually kind of fun I don't know if I'm gonna do it a lot yeah. but it was definitely something I probably would jump to every now and the then the downside of me for that is because it's just on uh, the Windows Store is that you have to get your Xbox Live Gold reaction activated to play multiplayer. Oh, sh- yeah. Remember those days when you had to have that? Yeah, yeah. They get <laughs> you both ways, man. Yeah. That's tough. Yeah. Um, I'll wait. You'll wait? <laughs> yeah. well, it'll be on Steam eventually, I'm sure, just like yeah. the other one was, because they're it's, it's out there and they're going to want to make money after I still after haven't played Crackdown 1, so I'm okay. <laughs> Dude, you you have that to look forward to. <laughs> yeah. <It's- laughs> Mo, how about you? What have you been playing? I've been playing a DLC for Far Cry 5. It's called New Hope. Have you guys seen that one? I'm aware of it. Yeah. Now, we talked about the expansion for Far Cry 5 that you didn't get because you had had enough Far Cry. Yep. So this one I got. Okay. <laughs> because basically it's it's a huge expansion. And so, okay, Far Cry 5 came out long enough. I'm not going to ruin anything. No, no, go ahead. But you know, at the end of the first one, basically there's a nuclear war. It's, yeah, an apocalypse. The apocalypse happens. Mm-hmm. And that's how it, the game ends, right? This is 18 years later or 16 years later. And they actually did it kind of different. Like it's not like a waste. Basically the area of that same town Hope County. mostly yeah. survived. Okay. More or less. You know, uh, people were like, because it's a prepper land, like a lot of people are preppers. So people stayed on the ground for a okay. while. Okay, sure. True. Yeah. Right. So there is no like radiation fall out or anything although there are some funky like these plant these flowers that seem to be growing everywhere so it's kind of a weird thing we see a, a building like half buried but covered flowers you know and uh, and so basically you're playing the same map except it's after this apocalypse okay. which so there's they still added the things I like like the prepper areas which are basically puzzles right those are they fun. still have that which Good. is awesome and then they have this other thing that's really kind of makes it neat which is that there was a photographer in the first game yes it, it, yeah yeah you find her picture of, oh. of the original hope and so what you want to do is when you find like you're trying to match them with what it looks like today oh oh because it's, it's the same places but at post-apocalypse right okay and we match it's like a little mini adventure you go around mm-hmm. you can match the pictures like oh here's so-and-so's house and then you gotta find the house and you hold you have what it looks like picture now. And you yeah. can see the difference you know between two which is a nice way of tying it in okay so I think it keeps a lot of the Far Cry 5 stuff um, and it doesn't have that whole religious thing going on 
Pokemon, although right. it's kind of yeah. sort of there, but not really. Like his group is still around, but it's not quite the same it used to be. Um, and it's it's a lot of fun. It's like playing the original game again. One of the most promising things. I'm not sure if I'm ready to play this I yet. I'm kind of full of Far Cry right now. You yeah. know, as much as I love it, I'm kind of I, I had my fill of it. I was done with it. One thing that's interesting about it that I did read was in the in the Far Cry Five initial game, you're actually instrumental in helping deliver a child, and now 16 years later, you meet up with her. Yeah, uh, and she's one of the people that you work with because you have these companions that yeah. you travel with you. Oh, uh, okay. One thing they did because like they give you like people companions, and I'm like, all right, whatever. They get died. I don't care. Then they give you a dog also, and I'm like, okay, I don't want this freaking dog. <laughs> <laughs> well, it turns out they don't. Oh, good. <laughs> so if they do in a battle, you can bring them back. Yeah, because I was just I feel because uh, Fallout did something similar where you had this dog pain that died the first time you fought something, Screw and then you just feel like crap after that. You know, <laughs> I'm like, no, go home. You know, go away from me. But it was like I said, it was, it was a well, it's a well as well done as the other one. It's the whole county again. So another basically is playing the same, you know, whole another thing. All right. So being an expansion, how much was this? Was this a full, this full was, price uh, game? Or? Uh, this was twenty two something. I think it was uh, for a new game. That's pretty decent. But yeah. they built upon the assets of what they already had. Exactly. Yeah. And it was, and but it's a full map again of Hope County. New campaign of but all it's a stuff to do. It's funny they have these little things now because there's, there's a group of outsiders that are in there trying to take over the county, and that's who you're fighting. And um, but when these like whenever you go to one of these prepper areas, mm-hmm. um, so you go there and they always have like usually some of the bad guys are there. You have to get rid of them. But one of them you walk up to, and all of a sudden you like you as you walk up, you hear a scream, and you see one of them running out of a shed on fire. <laughs> <laughs> and you're like, huh? And then you look in, and the guy had a trap set. Oh. And if you don't do it right, you're going to catch on fire. <laughs> and it's just little humor, things like that, which I thought were great. Which they've always kind of had in Far Cry. Yeah, yeah absolutely. So. Absolutely. So definitely recommend it. Okay, good. Thanks, Mo. It's no problem getting the redness out of my eyes. All these drops work just fine. They all soothe and clear my eyes. The problem is getting the drops in. So for me, it's Ocusol, because Ocusol's little nose bridge makes it easy. It helps steady my hand, so ta-da, it feels nice. Could you use a helping hand on your next electronics project? Quad Hands is the ultimate third hand helping hands vice and hobby station. The first thing you'll notice is how heavy a quad hands is. It's made from solid steel and then coated with a baked on powder coat for a durable finish. And the rubber feet are gonna keep it from sliding on your bench and give you a nice sturdy work surface. Those flexible all metal gooseneck arms feature rotating alligator clips to hold your boards and wires firmly in place. And removable silicone covers come pre-installed on those clips to protect those delicate wires and boards. And those arms can be put anywhere you need them. No fumbling around with awkward joints that are difficult to position. The quad hands was designed to help you do your best work it's built to last right here in the USA and backed by a lifetime guarantee. So what are you waiting for? Order yours today from Amazon or quadhands.com. Gen X Grown Up podcast listeners can save 20%. Just use offer code GENXUP20. That's G-E-N-X-U-P-2-0. For your next project, let a quad hands hold what your hands create. I don't know about you guys, but I have something I'm actually really looking forward to coming up. I've been looking forward to for a while, which is Captain Marvel movie. Oh, yeah. Yeah. You know, yeah absolutely. It's coming out March 6th. Yep. And, I mean, the trailers look awesome. It just looks like it's going to be a really good movie. Yeah, we're definitely highlighting that on Drawn and Paneled coming oh, yeah. up. We're going to do go. a yes, back right. issue centered around Captain Marvel. Yeah, so he said it's this is like the precursor movie to seeing the final Avengers one, which is coming out, I guess, in a couple months. Yep. yep. This is like a necessary one you have to this see. This is our first kind of story block post Infinity. Yeah. Infinity, Infinity, Infinity Gauntlet. Well, Infinity it's called yeah yeah Infinity yeah because yeah, after that happened I mean we've had other Marvel movies but they really weren't progressing that story I know this is kind of a flashback but this is going to play directly into well, Endgame right and this is also part of the next gen generation of Marvel Disney films it's like Gen Four Gen Five it's the now, start of whatever. that oh, yeah really? so this is the start of the whole new thing because you're going to lose some characters in Avengers right. Endgame uh-huh. and so now she is going to be one of the principals moving forward oh. so, so she's kind know. of like our our new uh, Iron Man uh, sort well, of. or Captain America or, or something. your Captain guy. That's oh, whatever. What, right. Gotcha. Because there's been a lot of Twitter stuff out there where yeah, who knows? Uh, Chris Evans has said, you know, I'm so happy that I was, you know, able to play this sure. role. Thank you so much for the memories. And everybody's like, oh, that means Captain America is going to die. Or it could mean he's just not going to do the role anymore. Uh, they're not going to recast some of those roles. You just have different heroes. You you can recast the Hulk. Well, you can do have. that because <laughs> they have like the times. Hulk, <laughs> because Again. the CGI Hulk is going to yeah. be, yeah. you know, you can move that around, but you're not going to recast Captain America and get away with it. Yeah. I mean, I can't think or of Tony a single Stark way that either. would come out. 
Robert Downey Jr. Yeah, too. exactly. He's Robert Downey Jr. Card. is Iron Man. Yep. So yeah, it's going to come out March 6th, which is one week after this podcast drop. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you go. I'm going to be there. Sounds <laughs> good. So how about you, John? What are you looking forward to? You know, as long as we've been recording this podcast, I have not purchased a new phone. What, in like the last Two 45 years. minutes? No, no, no. Oh, the, oh. You the entire podcast. The entire podcast. <laughs> no, no I've, not bought, podcast. I've also not bought a new phone in the last hour, <laughs> but <laughs> I've had the same cell phone. In fact, we talked a year or so ago about when the uh, Galaxy S9 came out. Right. Mm-hmm. You were like, eh. I was so happy with the S8 that I'm like, I don't even care. Yeah, right. and that's what I have is the S8 Plus, just yep. like you. Yeah. Yep. So, uh, but the uh, the unpacked event from Samsung was just I a week or so ago. I saw some stuff on that one, yeah. And uh, I pulled the trigger. I did order the new order, Galaxy right? S10 Plus. So you went ahead and went that way as opposed to the foldable. Oh, yeah. Okay. I think that, yeah, the Galaxy Fold foldable? is... Yes. Yeah, the Galaxy Fold is... First, it's too expensive for what it is. Yeah, like two grand. Whoa. It, it's too much... You're basically paying Samsung to, to beta test a new prototype, right. in my opinion. Yeah. I'm not sure if they... It's not perfect. Not a perfect phone, not a perfect tablet. It's neat looking. I want to I want to play it's with it. It's interesting, right. I don't want it to be my daily driver, though. Right. Uh, but I did order the S10 Plus, and I'm going to get that. It should deliver March 8th with everybody else's brand new one. Okay. Wow. You get a free new pair of... Of these little, uh, basically the earbud, earpod, oh, earpod yeah. killers. Yeah, right. Yeah. So what made you decide to pull the trigger on this? Well, so first is because I'm a dork and want a new toy. Oh, of course. Yeah, yeah. Right. But, but there was enough. And in he it already that, had a door lock. That's true. <laughs> there's, a, there's enough cool new stuff in it. First, I use my phone for so much of our YouTube stuff. Mm-hmm. Sure. The S10 Plus has five cameras. Right. Yeah, Jeez. I noticed that because it's, even though it's a smaller device than the foldable, which has six cameras, yep. it still almost has the same amount of. It has of, three cameras on the back, <laughs> two yeah. selfie cams. Hugely improved stabilization. A lot of that's supposed to be for that field focusing stuff, There's right? field focusing. Oh, There's also, yeah. so basically you have optical zoom because the different cameras can shoot at different depths. So you want to zoom in on something, you just change to one of the cameras and it dynamically changes as you zoom to the different optics. It has the in-glass thumbprint sensor that's actually nice. sonic. It's oh. not light-based. Sonic. Which means when the screen is off, you can touch your phone and it can unlock. Oh, wow. The, when the screen's totally off. Previous in-screen fingerprint sensors had to have a burst of light to reflect back. Right. And so in a dark room, it was like, ah, Oh, my eyes, my retinas, you know. <laughs> right. the, this is this is actually sonic, and it, it shoots up and it gets like sonar off of your thumb and get the thumbprint. So that's when, crazy. With your sonar screen completely detailed off. enough to figure out your fingerprint. Yeah, yeah nuts. Good lord. There, there's so I much. I remember Hunt for Red October. It was just <laughs> like a little. It was a little blurb, a little bleep thing. Oh, that's a sub, or it could be a whale. Right. <laughs> Uh, as, as far as cameras, I mean, the reviews that I've read so far have said it, it, it's it's setting a new benchmark for like uh, phone cameras yeah. uh, and the quality of it. Uh, and I use mine for so much of that. Uh, mm-hmm. it's, it's stereo speakers rather than mono, like my S8. Isn't there a terabyte of storage on this one too? You can get a terabyte. Okay. Ooh. You could. That's a lot of storage. Yeah. I did not buy the stupid expensive one for because ter- <laughs> you still have an SD card in Samsung phones. Oh, yeah. So well, I can put, a, yeah. I, you could put a half terabyte ex- expansion card into it right. and not have to buy the expensive phone. So. Okay. So how much? Is, how much is going to throw you back? You know, I didn't buy the super expensive one. I bought basically what is the base one. It's the, okay. You have to get the ceramic back one to get the terabyte, oh, which is silly because right. you're going to cover the back. So yeah. who cares? Yeah. Uh, so yeah, I think uh, I bought the one that was like basically $999. Right. Uh, I had a little bit of credit thanks price. to my Samsung Pay off of it. And plus I was able to trade in my old S7 Edge for 150 bucks off. Oh, no, okay. Nice. And I get a pair of those earbuds that are valued at 150 bucks. Well, yeah, those earbuds go. are wow. going to be nice. Yeah. That's, I'm, I was looking forward to that because, you know, you can get some like third party stuff right yeah. now but to have something that's built by the same company that's always does it have fun. a headphone jack it does <laughs> <laughs> and, and it has a thing called power share so you know how you charge your phone wirelessly yeah you can flip it over turn it on and charge something else wirelessly on the back of your phone oh so you can charge the earbuds <laughs> with your phone wirelessly nice that's you flip slick. it over turn it on put your earbuds on it in the case and they charge something else that's, that's a little slick. bit like some of those surface pins or the macbook pro pins that's right you put them on there and they yeah. start nice. charging. okay all right so i'm looking forward to finally having a new phone i mean the s8 has been great didn't even need the nine, but the S10 is something that I kind of was looking forward to. It's the 10th anniversary phone. I'm looking forward to it too because John gets to buy it before I have. I'll to. tell you all yeah. about it. <laughs> <laughs> Early adopter. What are you looking forward to, George? I am looking forward to an event that we are all going to be at Infinity Con. Yep. We're yeah. at Pensacon this week. Right. Next week, Infinity, Infinity Con. Con. That's in Lake City, Florida. Lake City, Florida. Yeah. It's going to be March 2nd and 3rd. It's a lot of fun. It's a smallish convention. It is. But they've like actually those. had, a, they've had a really good turnout of, in years past and they've had some really good guests. 
guess one year, the first year I went, they had like five or six people from the Battlestar Galactica Reimagined series. They had Edward James Olmos. They had Trisha mm-hmm. Helfer. They had a whole bunch of those people. They've paired it back now to where now it's like one main guest and this year is a comic book artist. So we are actually going to have a full 10 by 10 booth there, mm-hmm. which is really cool. We're going to be running a booth for Scout Comics, which right. is a friend of the show. They've been really great to us. But we're also going to have some Gen X merchandise That's for the right. first time, which yeah. is kind of nice. You we'll know, be there. Gonna... Very awesome merchandise. Yeah, I, I mean, some unique posters that we've mm-hmm. designed and yep. had some artists commissioned and John even did one of the posters sure. himself. Yep. So yep. Yeah, yeah, really cool. I, I'm looking forward to it. Try and to put some money in the coffers. Yeah, yeah. he'll bit. pay for all this new uh, <laughs> recording equipment. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Before my wife Before gets the bill. Before right? she finds out. Right. <laughs> it's a small convention. It's two days, but the people there are super nice. They're always really great yeah. to us. They do talk about convenient. It's literally halfway between Jacksonville and Tallahassee yeah, for us to get to. It's like, hallelujah. Right. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it, so, you do it a day. Yep. You could. Yeah. Yep. You could, this is one you could drive to, come back home for us at least. And guys are, again, I said they're super nice. It's at the Lake City National Guard Armory. Oh, same place. Same place. Same place. Um, And they are going to have the same setup. So it'll have some indoor stuff. It'll have some outdoor stuff in the parking lot. And they're going to have a whole bunch of live stuff. They're going to have a contest for costumes with a $2,000 prize pool. They're going to have a face-off style contest this year. So makeup. So makeup, you know, battles and that kind of stuff that's going to have a prize pool. Then they're also going to have the one that my son is super interested in, a Smash Brothers tournament. Of course. (laughs) So he's he's like all gearing up and practicing. Dad, you got to play teams with me. I'm like, you know, that's just throwing money away. <laughs> but he he's looking you. forward to. Yeah, he. Uh, I need a second player to. Yeah, I to just bask need you in to my mash brilliance. a couple of yeah. buttons, and then just, when you just, die, just I'll stand take in the over. corner. Don't move. <laughs> <laughs> it's very close. He tells me stand in because I always play the big heavy guy. Stand in the middle. Don't let them do anything. I'll take care of the rest. That's, that's right. what he tells me. I'm like, okay, you're the bait. Yeah, <laughs> he'll do the heavy lifting. Exactly. This is year six now for them, and they are also looking to partner with us to do an event in Tallahassee in the Woo-hoo. summer. All right. So All right. We have a, this is convention season. It's ramping yeah. up. So we yep. have quite a few coming up. Usually starts in January. We got a slow start this year because we didn't do anything in January. But Pensacon is always a good one to go mm-hmm. to. And yep. Infinity Con looks to be the same. Yeah. All right. Sounds I will good. see you there. Yeah. <laughs> There's a certain feeling you get right after a foamy shave when your mirror tells you you're going to look like Mr. Terrific all day. That's the foamy feeling. And it comes from that clean, close, foamy shave. If there was anything in this show you'd like to learn more about, the show notes which accompany each episode are full of links to click and explore. Catch up on past episodes and get pinged every time a new one's released by subscribing wherever you listen to podcasts. And you know, iTunes reviews help more than you know, so if you haven't yet, please rate and review us in the iTunes app. And if you have a friend who isn't yet listening, why not? Tell them about us, they'll thank you later. You're our fourth listener, and we'd love to read your emails right here on the show, so hit us up at podcast at genxgrownup.com. And finally, Gen X Grown Up is more than just this podcast. Our YouTube channel has hundreds of videos ready for you to enjoy, plus you can find our entire body of work on genxgrownup.com. That is going to just about wrap it up for this edition of the Gen X Grown Up Podcast. It's been different being in the same room. Yeah, sure. It's been cool. It's nice. Yeah, very yeah. nice. Very nice. Yeah, we don't always have that luxury, but when we do, hell, we should I take like that I can hear my voice as opposed to the headphones muffling in the earphone. Everything. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we always have to deal with your voice, so now you right. know what we have. Hey, the old Owen Wilson just doesn't come out as much. <laughs> <laughs> you get to share our pain, George. Thanks. Well, I figure I'm going to make you stare at my face. Might as well share the pain of my voice. <laughs> Oh, good. Before we leave, I absolutely have to make sure we give a huge shout out to all of the patrons who support us over on Patreon, there who keep the lights on, who allow us to keep doing what we're doing. I'm talking to you, Corey and Jessica, Marcus and Agile and Dana and Slowmo and Stubaka and Stian and T2. We love you so much for helping us out. You know, really appreciate it. And if you're listening to this and you're enjoying what we do, head on over to Patreon for as little as a buck a month. You can help us keep the lights on and we will enjoy it more than you And keep me from getting a divorce. Maybe, 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 you know, maybe. He's going to stop buying it's things. An, it's, but it's an no, added but bonus. It helps. It's but an added help. bonus. We'll delay it, if nothing else. <laughs> uh, we will be back in two weeks with a regular edition of the show, but we'll be here next week with a backtrack. Okay. The backtracks yeah. where we pick a single topic from our youth growing up and dig in deep on that. And next week, we're going to be talking about pay phones, pagers, and passing notes. What life was like oh before my. cell phones <laughs> were the thing. Yeah. Wow. Okay, that'll be Sounds interesting. Like, yeah. Oh, yeah. I'll have to get my crib notes out and start folding them up and everything. Yeah. With the rubber band. Yeah. Yep. Talk about, yeah. yeah. And two from on the outside. Right. That's right. <laughs> so that's going to be the next backtrack. You will not want to miss that. We hope you'll join us for it. Until then, I am John. George, thanks so much for being here. Yes, sir. Mo, always appreciate you. Yep, always fun. And fourth listener, you know we appreciate you most of all. We'll talk to you next time. Bye-bye. See you guys. Take care, everybody. No life, no 
fun. Don't you know that you're a grown up? No games, no puns. Basically, life sucks as a grown up. This podcast is an affiliate of the GWW Radio Network. Visit Geeks Worldwide at the GWW.com for news, reviews, and opinions on video games, comics, TV, cosplay, and more. I was like, <laughs> I was like, am I in trouble? What happened? <laughs> yeah, I was like, uh-oh. Well, at first I was waiting for you to finish your sip, and then I was still thinking. I got stuck in a loop. <laughs> These are the problems with doing it face-to-face, because we can see his expression. Yeah. We're like, what the it's fuck? Like, what's wrong with you? Yeah. <laughs> he has a weird look in his face. I don't know <laughs> what the going on. Mo and I are like, I, we I didn't know he did that with his ears. Let's look the other way. Maybe we should. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> are we all face away from each other? There? Are we supposed to be looking at something? <laughs> <laughs> Greetings from Evergreen Podcasts. We're rolling out a listener survey, and we want to hear from you. The information in the survey will help us gather statistics and in turn make our shows more appealing to advertisers. I know most people don't like ads, but this is one of the only ways our shows make money and help keep their lights on. We promise it will only take a few minutes, but the impact on our podcasts will be tremendous. As a token of our appreciation, we'll randomly select one lucky participant each month to win an exclusive merchandise package from Evergreen Podcasts. Head to evergreenpodcast.com slash listener survey to help a show and possibly get some free stuff for doing so. We can't thank you enough for the support. Now back to the show.